Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be going through how we can make use of what we've created so far and how it can easily be made uh, useful for uh, more advanced attack abilities, essentially. So uh, if we go and look at our current montage, which we have created so far, which is our slash, we have this very simple ability where we're just doing one simple move and at a certain point in time we are determining where an ability is supposed to start, where it's supposed to end, and that's all good and fine. And from this we also make sure that we activate our tick to uh, start determining uh, if we are hitting a character and then we will end our ability to listen to tick at the end of the state here. Now this might feel like a roundabout way to determine if you have done damage in some points and there might be some merit to that but the point of this is that you give yourself a lot of flexibility moving forward and that is generally how you approach uh, things when it comes to programming and game development as well is we are spending a lot of time to create a game framework we could create something very crappy that would get like looking okay pretty fast if we just built a shitty system um, but by spending a little bit more time making a framework for example you set up for spending a little bit more time in the beginning to save a whole lot of time later on when you want to add new things because it's very easy to add things instead of like having uh, lots of additional like multiplied or duplicated code everywhere to make sure that you're taking care of a new state and stuff like that. So let's show how this has strength and power when it comes to our attacks. Uh, we have another slash here called, uh, the first one was called slash 2, now this one is called slash and opening this one up you can see it has a little bit more of an advanced uh, attack animation. It has multiple swings inside of it. And this is what we're going to be enhancing today. So what we will be doing is we will first of all pause this. We will go over here, we will create an anim montage. Like so, we'll call this one um, maybe not the best names ever. Let's call the first one rename it to just um, slash montage and the other one to um, uh, multiple slash montage or something like that. Now they're pretty descriptive of what they're doing. And let's create another ability so that we can make use of this. So we have an ability for slash. We want this one to behave similarly. So let's just do duplicate. And we'll call this one uh, multi slash. Opening this one up, you know that we have our montage, which we determine which montage to play. So we just change to the multiple, uh, the multiple slash montage. And now essentially we have our ability already created. So now we just need to add it to our character. So how do we edit our character? We go to our character and we say, uh, instead of having starting abilities of these, which currently just like debug stuff that we put before, we can, uh, for example, remove the last one and change the second one to be the multi slash. Now compiling and saving, we have also, we need to put some text also, so we know that it's a multi slash. Let's, um, under UI here we, here we can say, instead of slash, we call it multi. Just so we know it's a different one. We'll compile. We'll also change the logo to be something different so that we know uh, it's not the same as the other one. Uh, do we have any kind of pictures at all? Let's go for the banner base color there. You, the, the icons doesn't matter. I'm just cho choosing these two so that we can easily see the difference between them because remember our user interface is driven by what abilities we have now. So now it immediately knows that we have a slash and a multi slash and different icons and different everything like that. Um, the next step is to have an ability actually activate the ability. So currently we have an ability on E. So let's add another key. So keyboard R for example. 
we can just copy paste this for now to make it easier for us uh, like so and instead of index 0 we will be using index 1 because that is the index that we have here for our new ability and now going into our character here now we can just press 1 to sorry not 1 uh, e to do our normal slash or r to do our multi slash which looks like this then currently okay um now going to our multi slash ability we have multiple steps here where we might want to deal damage also let's demonstrate that that if i'm standing next to this character and pressing r uh, we're not doing any line traces we're not doing anything we're just like moving forward essentially uh, in the animation nothing is actually happening damage wise uh, but if we go to our third person no not our great multi slash actually let's close this one down because it had the old name or maybe i was in the animation i'm not sure anyway let's go to the montage so here we go here's the montage so we might want to designate that it should be doing damage from let's say this point where it's over there we'll just go to notify state which we already created from before we add our damage window we look where should the swing stop it should be stopping over there let's say and move it over here save go in play with our character again and now if we press our r key you can see that we are immediately starting to trace uh, where we did that first swing here and if we wanted to we could now go further with this and say well there's another swing over here let's start another damage detection window over here so just do that we'll say that this one goes until maybe that point so we'll stop it over there we'll continue the animation maybe here's a third swing we want to take into consideration we'll add another notify state and choose the damage window again and then we track the animation and see it maybe stops there let's say over there let's say like so okay that's how easy it is now we have three different areas where it will be checking for damage you can see along the animation and it's always keeping track of itself it's enabling tick disabling tick when it needs to it's just tracing when it needs to uh, all of that stuff is handled by the things that we have already created so far now you probably noticed that the character is moving backwards and forwards with this animation and that is because this is an animation that has root motion enabled on it so if we want to have uh, root motion enabled animations working for this then we need to do a few things we need to one of the things we need to do is go to our animation blueprint which we can find over here in our characters third person and in blueprint and opening that one up we need to change a setting here that says uh, root motion from montages only if it is not already enabled so that's that's all good and fine here in this case uh, so we don't really need compile and save but i do it anyway in our uh, animation itself our animation we find over here which is called now in this case uh, great sword slash this one uh, this one is the one that has the multiple slashes in it and we know it has movement in it you want to have root motion then you enable the root motion from over here which means that this is what it looks like now so it will be moving along with the root motion of the animation available and this is already handled in the animation that i provided from you in the earlier episodes so going to our character now and pressing our ability we can now see that he will actually be moving along with his animation like so and if we also check our character over here the one that's called uh, third person character 2 and check its Let's see attributes and health we can see that it's currently at full health but if we now start swinging on this character once twice three times so three different swing partitions essentially you can see that it has lost its life is down to 70 life there on the right and the reason for that is we chose to make our combat component here 
clear the target cache essentially when we're starting our damage selection, which means that we can consider each of these. Okay, now it's. Let me show you. Each of these different time windows or damage windows that we create are able to do damage to the same character multiple times. So in this case, we have three different occur occurrences where we want to keep track of and do damage. And this is how I chose to have it. If you don't want to have it this way, then you can, of course, change that. So um, even if you want to have three different windows where uh, there is an opportunity to do, do a damage, if the ability as a whole is only supposed to do damage once, you just clear the cache at a different place where it makes more sense for your logic, essentially. But yeah, so now you see the, the flexibility that is afforded us by having spent a little bit of time to create some systems behind and some objects to help us with the logic that we're trying to achieve. So now you can see how easy it is to just add new abilities. We just choose another animation. We, we choose a damage window for it. We make sure to create an ability for it so that we have a specific name and a specific icon and a specific montage connected to it. We make sure that our character has that ability available in its starting abilities and give ourselves some kind of input in which we can activate the ability. And that's essentially the whole workflow of creating a whole new attack ability like this. It's very simple and it's very powerful. Anyway, I think this is a good place to stop for now. I hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.